Welcome to this week's edition of Toop TV. Now the weather's been absolutely textbook perfect. A lot of you have put your homes on the market and what's critical at the moment is for your property to stand out. So stay tuned, we'll show you how to do that. Now for those of you that have been following our renovation section, today we look at completing a home renovation. In SA's finest, we go to Allgate and look at a sensational property. Now remember, we're live, we're interactive, so get on the phones, get the emails running, and we'll answer your questions at the end of the show. Some amazing properties today to look at, as always, and I did say that chimney, I'm hoping it's straight and doesn't fall off. What a, uh, what a great segment that you'll see a bit later. Now we also go down to Port Nalunga South and have a look at executive rentals. But for now, let's go and look at the inside story on high density living. The convenience of living close to public transport, retail outlets, restaurants and office towers. It's what 21st century accommodation is all about. So it's no surprise inner city high density living is becoming increasingly popular. People, depending where the units are, wanting to live somewhere close to transport and or the city, shopping and that sort of thing. Uh, maintenance, uh, lifestyle, uh, don't need the space, don't have the time to maintain the space. Um, smaller household units, uh, not so many married couples, large two, three kid families. If you want to live close to the city, which um, historically a lot, we're in just the fringe here, a lot of the, um, the houses here are generationally bought quite a few generations ago for young people trying to get this close to the city, just can't, can't sort of buy a big house, so people are looking towards the small units, I suppose. Nationally, the proportion of unit and apartment sales increased by 10% over the past 15 years. The biggest jump in unit sales occurred in Melbourne and Sydney, where unit prices are significantly more affordable than houses. As of August this year, the median unit price of capital cities across the country was $68,000 more affordable than house prices. So watch this space as its expected unit sales will continue to improve as empty nesters look to downsize and units provide buyers with the opportunity to live in a more desirable suburb at a cheaper price. As much as I hate to admit it, I actually remember when there were essentially no apartments. There were units, but there weren't apartments. And that wasn't that many years ago and how things are changing and they're changing rapidly. And I assume by the way they, they're talking about the 30 year plan, uh, there's going to be a real major step up in this high density living, so watch this space. Now joining me today is a great friend of mine, someone that we go back a long way. You've all seen him on the TV shows, the radio, he's everywhere, everybody knows him. Uh, but one of the great guys of South Australia and that's Michael Keelan. Welcome Michael. Um, Anthony, good afternoon, welcome to you. Yes, indeed. You, you've, <laughs> you've got your own TV program, it's sensational. Well, can I say, you invited me onto yours and you know, oh, what can I do? All those years ago, we used to walk around gardens and tell people how to prepare their gardens uh, to have uh, the best impact for a sale. You know, yeah, and the cameras right. were like they were this big, weren't they? They were huge, uh, but awesome time. And I still get nervous. But you well, know, I think if you don't get nervous when you sit in front of a camera, uh, and it's pretty, I don't want to put it off, but live television, that's fairly daunting in anyone's language. And yeah. uh, you do a good job. Well done. Thanks, Credit mate. to you. Yeah, thank and you. Your team. Now, I said before we started the show that everyone knows Michael Keelan, so I, wanted, I, I want the viewers to know something that they don't know about Michael Keelan. Well, uh, something I don't know, I went to Wellington Road Primary School. Now, not many people would know that. Okay. Younger people certainly wouldn't know it. That's now currently Port Rush Road. Oh, is that right? You, didn't you know that no. either? I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, no, it used to be called Wellington Road. And on the corner of Wellington Road and then Paynham Road was the Duke of Wellington Hotel. And that used to go through to, I think, the McGill Road and then it was something else, something else. Then they gradually made that all Portrush Road. Uh, but yeah, Wellington Road School still there and uh, went there. And I suppose not many people know I was called up National Service. Okay. Did you actually serve? No, well, I did for two years, but not overseas. Right, okay. Uh, not everyone went overseas. It was in interesting times. Uh, we went everywhere, everywhere else, but not overseas. But um, I don't know what else. Uh, what, what about a quick rundown? You used to have uh, a, um, like hire plants and stuff like that? Yeah, years ago. Fa father had a, a fodder business for years and years and years. And in fact, it's still there uh, on Paynham Road. Uh, and that developed into a nursery. And then from there, we had a landscaping business, a plant hire business. 
uh, and then I got into the media in those years somewhere along the line. Radio 37 years ago, is television right? about is, 30. Is that right? So, now there's a bit of DNA back even further, isn't there? There is, and I'm very proud of that. In fact, uh, my grandmother, who was an amazing gardener and died in her 92nd year still gardening on crutches, I mean, it's quite amazing. Her great grandfather was Queen Victoria's head gardener at uh, Windsor Castle. Does that give you a pass? Well, it does, and, and she, we can't find it, but I've seen it. The, the, the actual, um, um, oh, I can't think, the reference yep. that she gave, uh, Mr. Coleman, and uh, all those years ago, we can't find it. It's somewhere around the place. But yeah, that's terrific to go. And I've been back in Windsor Castle and you think, well, you know, my great, great, great grandfather had something to do with the beautiful gardens there. That's awesome. Now, mm. Michael, we want to get stuck into property and how it affects the values. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, there are three categories in my view. There's people who are looking to sell and they hadn't thought about their garden. Mm -hmm. So about two weeks out, they want Panic. some miracle to happen and make the garden great. Then there's the people who are thinking and planning, they say within a year we want to sell. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people who've just bought, but they want to set up for a sale, you know, two, three, five years down the track. Mm -hmm. Let's go to two, three, five years down the track. What would you suggest to them? Oh, well, certainly you'd, you'd be looking at tree placement then if uh, it was a, tr um, a, a block without, um, uh, with any shade, you could, uh, in those uh, years, you could develop shade, you could develop really established formal gardens, you could develop uh, wonderful native gardens. You've got time, in three to five years, gardens, new gardens start to, as, as you witness here at the front of your plate, second what, second, second year? Second year. Third yeah. and fourth year. Mind you, you have given us a few tips. Yeah. Get the fertiliser on. <laughs> yeah, don't have me as a garden consultant. I ring all out. No, no, but seriously, it's, it's about the second, the first two couple of years are hard. You get a few losses and all that. But having that luxury of five years, I mean, beautiful. And you could get that garden just tickety-boo. Correct irrigation systems, paving, mulching, uh, structure, bones, the structure of the, of the garden, yes. One year out. Oh, one year out, it's, it's a bit of a crash-bang situation because um, uh, you, you could um, buy fairly established plants, I suppose, and, and make it look as though it's been there a while. Um, you can do a lot with an existing garden. If you bought a, a, a property that had a, some sort of a garden but had been overrun and, and unloved, you can do a fair bit with that in a short space of time. So that, that's, a, that's a nice time to have. Now, the most common one week out or two weeks? Panic. Sheer panic. What do you do? The, the worst thing you can do is clear everything up. And, and when I say that, just pull things out. Get someone in that knows what they're doing. There's, there's the, the, a landscaper that belongs to the landscape industry or your, your local nurseryman. Get them down and say, look, what can I do? If you've got a couple of guys for two or three days that know what to pull out, what to prune, uh, what branches to cut off of bigger trees and that to make them not only uh, safe but look safe. Um, and, and then finally, the, I suppose the, the thing that covers all landscapers' mistakes is the mulch. Get the right coloured mulch, the right texture. Um, straighten your paving up. Straighten your get your gravel, new gravel on your gravel driveway. Get rid of weeds in the driveway. Just little things that, yes, within a week of you putting up the, the little sign out the front, you could transform a garden. And you see, you see those makeovers I've seen, on TV. I've seen you do them. But I, we can do them. Uh, but but um, a real full-blown one is not cheap. But, Anthony, the value that would put on a property... Return on investment is incredible. It's nothing. It's yeah. nothing yeah. if you do it properly. Yeah, totally mm. agree. Mm. We're going to come back with some questions a bit later. All right, so stay with us. Um, and let's now go and have a look at the snippet of this uh, last week's Fireside Chat with Joe Borelli. Very interesting. 